Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm back with another video and today I'm going to be talking about the first Descendant. This is a game that's been on my radar for quite some time now. I actually played in the betas before. Um, it's going to be cross-platform. It's on um, PlayStation 5, PC, Xbox Series X and S and the game is great. It's been made on Unreal Engine 5 and the reason for today's video is we have just had a, a dev note recently talking about all of the new content that has been added into the game. Also, we have had confirmation now we've, we're going to be getting the final, final beta, um, which is only going to be over the weekend um, in May. I'll put the picture up now to show you the, the you know, the, the source of the information. And yeah, this game is absolutely fantastic graphically. It plays really, really well. It's a third person co-op um, action RPG, but it also is open world and it also has MMO elements, to be honest, which is the reason why, of course, I'm covering it on the channel because I love um, these style of games. I love, I love official fully fledged MMO RPGs, of course. Um, and I also love looter shooters and I love like action RPGs and open world games. And this basically has pieces of it all. So yeah, let's get into this one. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. So basically, this is the volume 10. So this is the 10th developer's note. Um, and they're talking about some stuff that, they were, they're, that they're adding into the game, which is interesting, which is why I'm saying about it has like MMO aspects, because obviously it has instance dungeons. It has... A leveling system it has um, a gearing system and skills and upgradable stuff like that and there's also like a, a hub section where you can basically see you know other players and you can see other players running around when you're doing doing some of the missions and stuff like that so yeah pretty pretty good it's not like I said a traditional massive to uh, like fully fledged MMORPG but nevertheless you should be checking out this game um, it's set to be releasing this summer of 2024 so we're saying here the biggest change uh, pertaining to mission gameplay is adding instance dungeons not only are instant dungeons intended to offer convenient mission gameplay but our goal is to guarantee content volume and variety specifically in addition to intercept battles we aim to establish instance dungeons as end game content now come on where else do we have instance dungeons as end game content MMORPGs <laughs> and um, also it says here uh, single player and co-op are supported and the difficulty level can be adjusted according to the number of players so if you are a solo player and you don't want to team up with anyone you're going to be able to do the solo dungeons there's going to be dungeons that you can do solo or you can team up with a group of friends or find some people to match make with and have some fun now um, I was saying this before in two of my other previous videos that we're noticing or I'm noticing a trend lately where there's a lot of these like MMO open world style games that are coming out at, at, like looter shooters. So they're sort of there's a lot more going away from the traditional MMO RPGs, but we're getting a lot more of these open world shooters with gear leveling progression and MMO dungeons and like aspects and stuff like that. Which to me, I'm I'm all for it. I'm really I'm really excited for these these new games coming out. Um, it's not always good to just play the same old you know stuff. It's nice to have something fresh, new, and exciting as well. And especially on Unreal Engine 5, the game looks absolutely fantastic. So we've got here, the instance dungeon is called Reclamation Operation in game. You can enter it through the terminal in Albion. Albion is basically like the hub based area that I said where you can go um, to speak to NPCs, to upgrade your gear, your skills, your weapons, and you can see tons and tons of players walking around there as well. Um, so we have a normal difficulty and a hard difficulty. Both settings use the same map, but there are big differences in the actual gameplay and content. So while clearing the given mission, uh, while clearing the given mission is the focus of the normal difficulty, hard mode is a mode with stronger end game character, providing a bigger challenge and offering distinct rewards based on how the level is cleared. Yeah, okay. So nothing new there, as in the harder the dungeon, 
the better the rewards, the better the gear you get, stuff like that, and the better gear you're gonna need to obviously come to clear these dungeons. So that's really, really good. Um, what else are they showing down here? Okay, so in, in addition, we've worked hard to make strategic gameplay more fun by introducing new hidden mechanics and traps. Our goal is to establish the dungeon as a key component of the first ascendant through its implementation of difficulty, strategy, and challenging tasks. So it's not gonna be, you're just gonna run through there, kill tons of mobs, and then brain dead, you can just turn off, turn off your brain and just shoot, shoot, shoot. There's actually gonna be challenges, hidden mechanics, and traps. So again, very, very good. They are improving the matchmaking system. So there's a private option has been added to matchmaking which many did request during the previous crossplay beta. In an inset battle or a dungeon, you can play alone or in a party using private matchmaking option. When playing alone, you will be entered into it immediately. When in a party, the party leader will select the private option and then enter with the party members. So again, basically, if you're already in a static group, you can just go in there as a group together or if you want to match make with random players, then you can have that option. And then thirdly, if you don't want to match make with anybody, you can just go in solo on your own. So that's cool. So that's really, really nice here. They're just showing off the improved matchmaking screen and then more gameplay and UI improvements, which is fine. Nothing too much to uh, look there. You can see it's just improved. It's just more clearer to say, that you've done it, you've completed the mission. Um, they've upgraded the monster's AI, which is really cool to see. There's some new content coming, which is a special operations research blocking. We'd like to announce some new content added to be added at launch. First, after the current mine blocking and resource defense, there is a new special operation bearing the dev code name of research blocking. It offers a new experience that stands apart from the standard extermination objectives to elaborate on the concept currently in the works as the code name suggests. The mission is to stop the Volgus, which infiltrated the continent of Ingress from conducting secret research. Nice, okay. Um, I do apologize guys, my voice, I am a little bit sick. Nothing too major, it's just a cold. So my voice might be a little bit off, but um, I wanted to bring this video to you guys and girls and introduce this, this game to the channel because of course, like I said, I'm gonna be playing a lot of this come summer of 2024. So yeah, new uh, new achievements and new titles, almost always fun. I love to try to get all of the achievements and try to get as much titles as possible. It adds more fun and you know, more, more things to do in the game that you're playing. Um, yeah, cool. Nothing, nothing too good to talk about there. There is a laboratory, which is brand new. So this is a way to, there's many ways to dive, there's many diverse characters, various equipment like firearms and modules. It is very important to try out the different combinations, but having to do so within the game has been inconvenient. So they are okay. So basically, in this laboratory, you're baby, you're basically able to uh, try out different builds, different weapons, different skills, and stuff like that. I like the idea. So you don't have to basically try and go into the the normal game and test it out. You can come into like the firing range if you like, which they're calling the laboratory. So that's really really good. Nice to see. Um, then we just got a few little um, FAQ here. So I'll read through these quickly. How many pre -slots, preset slots in loadout will be available at the start? So one preset slot will, have, will be available from the start. And as your mastery rank rises, the more slots will be opened. For weapon and descendant loadouts, there will be a total of three slots available regardless of your mastery rank. Good. In order to switch loadouts, how do you know if you're not in combat? So, okay, basically, to be in a combat condition, you need to attack an enemy or be attacked by one. Equipment cannot be changed during combat, and this applies the same to loadouts. In order to be in a non-combat condition, simply escape the battle, and a few seconds later, you can switch your loadout and your gear. Interesting. 
is there a auto recommended equip for reactor modules on my weapon or descendant and is there a filter for showing only the modules that fit my weapon or descendant so yes for module auto equip the dev team is currently contemplating various improvement directions we intend to share the progress and outcomes later for filters we already have a filter system where you can select to see only the modules that fit your descendant or weapon in addition, you can also search modules. So for example, when you enter range, it supports filtering to view all modules related to expanding skill effect ranges. Again, very, very good. Very, very like, you know, obvious stuff here. Can you auto sell or auto dismantle items or equipment right away as you obtain it? There is no function that will auto sell or auto dismantle items or equipment right away but we've improved the junk function to make selling and dismantling easier. When selling junk items, you can also determine the grade level, enhancement status for weapons, reactors, and items separately. Furthermore, we have improved the UI uh, to prevent accidental selling or dismantling of high value items. Okay, good. So you don't want, because the last thing you want to get is to say you get a legendary item, for example, and then you accidentally automatically just salvage it could you imagine the the, the pain <laughs> so yeah but anyway guys and girls that is it some interesting stuff coming to the game like i said the final final beta is upon us it's going to be only on pc because it's only a two-day beta um but it's also going to be an open beta so all you're going to have to do is just request access on steam um during the the, the, the weekend of, of may and like i said I'll put it up again one more time, the picture, which has the date and the time that the beta will go live. So if you're free on that weekend, I I recommend just jump in, that jump into the beta, download the game and have some fun. You won't regret it. It's going to be a free to play game as well. Um, like I said, cross play between console, PlayStation 5, Xbox, X and S and PC in the summer of 2024. So Stay tuned for more videos on First Ascendant when the game goes live and I'll catch you soon. Take care, everybody. Peace.